Hello and welcome to MedBoard. In this video, we will explore HIV and AIDS, including their symptoms, causes, and treatments. To understand the topic better, make sure to watch the video till the end and also support us by subscribing to our channel. Let's begin the video by first understanding what is HIV. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus and it attacks immune cells called CD4 cells. These are types of T cells that, that circulate in the blood, detecting infections throughout the body and anomalies in other cells. HIV targets and infiltrates CD4 cells, using them to create more copies of the virus. In doing so, it destroys the cells and reduces the body's ability to combat other infections and diseases. This increases the risk and impact of opportunistic infections and some types of cancer. Without treatment, the infection might progress to an advanced stage called AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Doctors identify AIDS as having a CD4 count of fewer than 200 cells per cubic millimeter. Also, they may diagnose AIDS if a person has characteristic opportunistic infections, associated types of cancer, or both. When a person with HIV does not receive treatment, AIDS likely develops as the immune system gradually wears down. However, advances in antiretroviral treatments have made this progression to AIDS increasingly less common. In 2018, more than 1.1 million people were living with HIV in the United States, and 6,000 deaths were related to AIDS. One of the main causes of HIV transmission is anal or vaginal intercourse without using barrier protection, or without taking pre-exposure prophylaxis. Another main cause of HIV transmission is sharing equipment for injecting drugs. Less commonly, HIV transmits to babies during pregnancy, childbirth, or breastfeeding. Also, there's a chance of transmission in blood transfusions, though the risk is extremely low when blood donations are effectively screened. Some people with HIV have no symptoms for months or even years after contracting the virus. Partly because of this, one in seven people with HIV in the United States does not know that they have it. Around 80% of people with HIV develop flu-like symptoms around two, six weeks after contracting the infection. These symptoms are collectively called acute retroviral syndrome. Early symptoms of HIV may include a fever, chills, sweating, particularly at night, enlarged glands or swollen lymph nodes, weakness, pain including joint pain, a sore throat, thrush, or a yeast infection, unintentional weight loss with advancing HIV. After the symptoms of acute retroviral syndrome resolve, many people go on to experience no HIV symptoms for years. While they feel well and appear healthy, the virus continues to develop and damage the immune system and organs. The slow process can continue for around 8 10 years. If a person with HIV does not receive effective treatment, the virus weakens the body's ability to fight infection, exposing it to serious illnesses. When CD4 cells are severely depleted at fewer than 200 cells per cubic millimeter, a doctor can diagnose AIDS, which is sometimes called stage 3 HIV. Symptoms of AIDS can include blurred vision, a dry cough, <coughs> night sweats, white spots on the tongue or mouth, shortness of breath or dyspnea, swollen glands lasting for weeks, diarrhea, which is usually persistent or chronic, a fever of over 100 egg F, 37 egg C that lasts for weeks, continuous fatigue, unintentional weight loss. A person with AIDS has a significantly increased risk of developing a life-threatening illness. Without treatment, People with AIDS typically live for round three after the diagnosis. However, by taking other medications alongside HIV treatment, a person with AIDS can control, prevent, and treat serious complications. Some opportunistic infections that can signal to a doctor that a person has AIDS include candidiasis of the bronchi, trachea, esophagus, and lungs, coccidioidomycosis, cryptococcus, Cytomegalovirus disease, CMV, herpes, histoplasmosis, tuberculosis, 
Infections with mycobacteria. Recurrent pneumonia. Recurrent salmonella septicemia. Toxoplasmosis and some others. A person with HIV may have a higher risk of various types of cancer, including lymphoma. Kaposi's sarcoma herpes virus, also known as human herpes virus 8, causes a type of cancer that involves the growth of abnormal blood vessels. These can develop anywhere in the body. In addition, Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma have strong links to HIV infection. These affect the lymph nodes and lymphoid tissues. Also, a female with HIV should receive regular checks for cervical cancer. To diagnose HIV, some tests may be performed. These include Nucleic acid amplification test, sometimes called NAT, can detect HIV infection as early as 10 days after exposure. An antigen or antibody blood test can detect HIV in a blood sample as early as 18 days after exposure. Most rapid tests and self-tests are antibody tests, and these can detect HIV antibodies as early as 21 days after exposure. While there is no cure for HIV, treatments can stop the progression of the infection. Receiving these treatments can reduce the risk of transmission. It can also extend a person's life expectancy and improve the quality of life. Now let's look at HIV treatments and medications for prevention. Number one, emergency HIV pills. Anyone who may have been exposed to the virus within the last 72 hours should speak with a healthcare provider about post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP. This medication may be able to stop the infection, especially if a person takes it as soon as possible after the potential exposure. A person takes PEP for 28 days, and a doctor monitors the person for HIV afterward. PEP is not 100% effective, so it is important to use prevention techniques, such as barrier protection and safe injection practices, including while taking PEP. Number 2. Antiretroviral drugs. Treating HIV involves taking antiretroviral medications, which fight the infection and slow the spread of the virus. People generally take a combination of medications, called highly active antiretroviral therapy or combination antiretroviral therapy. A person might refer to the approach as HART or CART, respectively. There are many types of antiretrovirals. Let us discuss each of them one by one. Protease inhibitors. Protease is an enzyme that HIV needs in order to replicate. These medications bind to the enzyme and inhibit its action, preventing HIV from making copies of itself. Examples of protease inhibitors include adizanavir and cobacistat, lopinavir and ritonavir, darinavir and cobacistat. Integrase inhibitors. HIV needs integrase enzyme to infect T cells, and these drugs block the enzyme. Due to their effectiveness and limited side effects, these are often the first line of treatment. Integrase inhibitors include Elvitegravir, Dolutegravir, Ralvagravir, Nucleoside and Nucleotide Reverse Transcriptase Inhibitors. These drugs, also called NRTIs or nukes, interfere with HIV as it tries to replicate. Types include Abacavir, Lamivudine and Zitavudine, Emtricidambine, Tenofovir Disoprexil, some other less common medications include 1. Non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors 2. Chemokine coreceptor antagonist 3. Entry inhibitors People often benefit from a combination of antiretroviral drugs and the right combination depends on factors specific to each person. Each class of antiretrovirals has different side effects but some common ones include nausea, fatigue, diarrhea, headaches, and rashes. The following strategies can prevent contact with HIV. Using barrier protection. Using safe injection practices. Avoiding exposure to relevant body fluids. Thanks for watching. Hope you have liked this video.
Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated.